What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. Man, the patch notes today were absolutely insane, but we are finishing up Barrage because we are going to go over to Rapid Fire because that is getting fixed Monday. But today I'm bringing you Barrage, a cold Barrage crit damage build, which is pretty, pretty fun. At first, it was really rough to learn the play style, and it just felt like it just, just there just wasn't enough damage. But after mass working the gear just a little bit and making some nice changes to our powers and stuff the build plays really really well so today i'm going to bring you all the skills gear paragon stuff you need to know and then we're going to showcase a tier 80 because as soon as we get our weapons to tier 8 out of 12 we can definitely do 80s and higher um, i will probably say that this build can probably get around tier 100 once you have everything completely maxed so if you do enjoy barrage which adam jackson if you see this i'm tagging you brother please give us multi-shot i would love that it doesn't have to be a skill change but give us an item that converts barrage into multi-shot that would be sick shout out to you brother um but let's go ahead and go over everything that we need let's go into the skill tree let's break some stuff down uh like i said this is a crit damage build okay we're doing a lot of damage here um, our crit strike chance is going to be heavily increased and we're going to get guaranteed crit strikes okay so we got puncture into fundamental puncture this is what's going to throw three blades. This is also what's going to help make our, our enemies vulnerable and also help us rack up our stacks to precision, which we'll talk about here at the end. Then, of course, we're doing barrage. We're doing barrage into advanced barrage. So whenever a single cast of barrage ricochets four times, our next cast is 20% increased crit. Now, I will say because of precision, we probably don't even need this and we could just do more vulnerable but you could take either one it's totally up to you um it's really really easy to get the precision stacks which is why we're going to do crit damage which i'm probably going to swap my my crit strike chances to uh i don't even know what else this these could be might be something else because we got crit strike damage we could just have decks but we'll talk about that in the gear piece in a moment uh then we got three ranks of sturdy for more dr which is getting buffed on monday one point into siphoning strikes to help heal. Then we got three points into starter step to move fast. One point into shadow step just to be able to do unstoppable. This is our only form of unstoppable. So if we get CC'd or anything like that, just pop this baby and we can move around. Caltrops again into methodical Caltrops because Caltrops deal cold damage, which we are a cold based build, which I really do enjoy. And it chills them for 25% per second, which just helps us freeze these guys. Uh, the damage also on Caltrops scales per duration. We did not take any um, tempers in duration, which I'll explain why shortly. We got dash just to kind of help move around. Um, we could maybe do something else with this, but this just helps us. It's just more mobility. There's not really anything else we could take. We could maybe take concealment just to have another unstoppable and move around maybe. But uh, yeah, we don't, we don't necessarily. This is just movement. If you want to swap this out, you can. Three points in the concussive after knocking back or knocking down, we gain 12% increased critical strike chance for four seconds. However, again, we don't necessarily need this. We could take the points out, put them here, right? So they're knocked down for even more. Um, or what you could do is you could do enhanced dash. You could come up here into discipline shadow step. You could also do rugged here for more DR on this build, which is fine. We don't need... Um, weapon mastery although what you could do is take points into weapon mastery if you really 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 wanted to this gives us 10 percent increased critical strike damage uh, which is pretty nice we may just max this and i'll showcase this for the video because we are using crossbows so even more crit damage is just great then we're going to come down we got agile i know you guys have been loving that use the cooldown we get 12 percent dodge awesome we max out exploit as well as malice for even more insane damage then we do Dark Shroud into Countering Dark Shroud for even more crit strike chance, which is fantastic. If you feel like you already have enough crit chance, then definitely do just subverting so you can move even faster. I think that would be really cool. Um, right now, we're just doing countering, but uh, you know what? We'll swap this for the video as well because countering is really, really good, but I do like moving fast. Uh, then we're going to come down, of course. We're cold imbuement build, so we're going to do cold. We do have eight cast of cold i really want to get this higher uh into mixed cold imbuement so we deal 20 percent more damage against crowd control enemies and then you double it which is 40 against frozen 
We max out Frigid Finesse here for even more damage. Insane on the Amulet. Then we're doing two points into Intervention as well as Alchemist Fortune. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because our non-physical damage we deal, which is going to be cold, has increased lucky hit chance. The reason that we're doing that is for each of the gear pieces here. Lucky hit chance to stun, lucky hit chance to stun, lucky hit chance to freeze, lucky hit chance to daze. I would really love to swap one of these out and be able to get freeze, but I think I used all my temperings. Uh, yeah, we, we only have three rolls on the gloves, which we ideally what we would want is one stun and then two freeze in one daze because we want to have a bigger chance to freeze because we do more damage this way. So for this, you know what? Let's just roll it live here for the video and see what we get here. Um, let's see if we get it. Chance to stun. We'll try again. Just for the video, chance to immobilize. Final one. Let's go. Believe. Slow. Okay. Now we're going to go in. So we have that, which is fine. We're going to go down. Right? Then we got, of course, one in Adrenaline Rush. And then Haste, which just helps us with energy. Um, increased movement speed. And then while below, we get increased attack speed to help rebuild that. Okay? Then we're finally going to be doing Precision. Okay, when you cast a marksman skill, you gain a stack of precision. You gain an additional stack if that skill critically strikes once per cast. So we can easily rack this up to four stacks. Now, it's very, very easy to get four stacks by using puncture. Puncture is a marksman skill, so we can rack up four stacks very easily, even if we don't crit. But when we reach four, our next marksman ultimate or core skill, which is barrage, will auto crit strike and deal 50% increased critical strike damage, consuming all stacks. The damage is further increased by 15% of our critical strike bonus, so we have 462% right now. So that is what we're using, guys. The build is pretty good with those skills. Um, now let's go into the gear. We got Shaco. This is the best in slot helmet. You can use a regular one if you want. Um, what I would suggest you get is cooldown, max life dex, or... Um, you could do like lucky hit if you really wanted to. You could temper on a resource or armor or something like that. Um, or you could run God Slayers, which is a cool little mechanic. I think Shaco is just better overall in the slot. Then we got Umbris. This is going to help us keep a like help us stay alive, right? We're going to stay alive with this, which is fantastic. Then we're coming down to Concussive Strikes. Again, this is why we run the very one chance to daze. So that way we can really get the daze all the time. Uh, then we got Might for even more DR. This is kind of a flex slot here. You could do something else in the spot if you really wanted to. I like Might. The DR is very nice on top of Shaco, which is fantastic. Then we got Frostbitten. The top part you don't care about. We are doing the 25% increased critical strike damage to frozen or stunned enemies. So that should always be happening, which is really nice. Then we got Rapid. I'm doing Rapid on my two-hander. Now, I know before you guys butcher me in the comments about not, any, not running Retribution or something else, or even running um, Banishing Volleys or Branching Volleys. Um, I really like Rapid. This build is very clunky. I really think that the Combo Point X builds besides um, Andy's Flurry, because of how high your attack speed gets in that build, that's the only exception. But for Barrage, even Rapid Fire, or even like penetrating shot the one two three shotgun one two three shotgun to me is just very clunky it just really is i did toy around running uh this weapon for that way on the 30 percent chance we generate which did make the build feel better but we lose over 200 and some odd percent 300 percent crit strike damage which isn't worth it um but with rapid fire on the two hand Using Puncture and moving around, the build feels very, very good. Much more fluid. Um, expectant, super easy. While we do our 1, 2, 3, this will get the 30% bo boost in damage. Then we got Retribution, of course, for the extra 30. And then we got Inner Calm. Now, this is the flex spot. This is a flex power. I got 10% damage, increased damage, multiplicative. Triple the bonus after standing still. We will rarely get the triple percent unless you're standing in front of a boss. Otherwise, the 10% flat damage is just very consistent. It feels good. I have tested this with elements as well as edge masters. Edge masters felt pretty good. Um, elements did not. 
but you could use either one so guys down in the comments if whoever's watching the video this is a flex use whatever you think feels the best to you then of course we got high velocity for not only the pierce but the 25 percent increased attack speed and then we have branching volleys on the amulet for even more damage and ricochet or excuse me um ricochet yeah increased damage and ricochet which is fantastic so that's the gear our specialization obviously is combo points for even more damage and not only that when we do fire we are at five arrows we go to nine at three points but in our gear if we do get the chance for barrage to be cast twice it goes to 10 then plus four on the um combo points at three so we get 14 arrows However, there is one negative that I will say about this build, which is different than like Heartseeker. Again, this isn't going to be as strong as Heartseeker. But the chance for barrage projectiles to be cast twice, 100% has to be on your two-hander as well as both of your swords. The reason for this is because the chance for barrage to be cast twice is very, very low. Even going this up to 12 I have this on 8 out of 12, and we're only at 48%. So you have to have it on all three in order to try to get to 100%. Now, we've done the calculations. If you get a max temper on the bow plus both swords, you do not have to crit when you're masterworking to get 100%. But if you don't, and you're like me and you don't, I've crit once, you probably need to crit either twice on the crossbow or once on the crossbow and then once on either one of the swords pending you don't have min rolls. So to get to 100% if you're gonna take this to 12 out of 12 masterwork, you probably need to crit at least one more time. But after that, then barrage is just absolutely insane. You're firing 14 arrows a shot. Um, so just keep that in mind. We got combo points just so people don't get crazy. Like why do you have three on there? That is why you have to run three because the the percent chances are too low across all three weapons. Now, into the Paragon board. Um, this is pretty straightforward. We're rocking six glyphs. We got Canny for increased non-fizz since we're cold. We got Combat for even more crit strike damage. This is max. And then skills that critically strike restore 12%. This is good. We got Control, obviously, for all the CC. But more importantly, all the increased damage against Frozen or Stunned. Then we got Efficacy. Uh, for even more imbuement skill effects which would be our cold then we got exploit uh, for obvious reasons one is the vulnerable damage itself but then to also make enemies vulnerable which is very important in this build because besides barrage firing three times and making them vulnerable this is the only other way that we can do it unless we sacrifice and take a curse touch or we take a lucky hit chance to make enemies vulnerable in a ring slot uh, which I wouldn't advise the last one because your lucky hit isn't super high. And then, of course, Ranger for even more damage. Uh, the link to this and everything will be down in the description below, guys. So, with that said, let's go over and just showcase an 80 for you guys. Um, it's been really fun. When it comes to the elixirs, if you are going to rock any, you could definitely do the seasonal one for even more life. But I have 40, so I'm okay. Uh, but the one that you would want is Precision. Increased critical strike chance by 6% and 30% more damage, which is what we have here. So let's go and pop this 80. Um, this is just going to be the baseline for the build. Like I said, you can probably get this up to tier 100 um, once everything's master worked to 12. But I will say that that's probably like a five or six minute run, roughly. Um, obviously, that all can change based on mob type, etc. But... The build is very fun. You freeze and crit everything. So you always want to make sure you get your combo points racked up. Which is very important. Because otherwise you don't deal a whole lot of damage. And I know that can be a playstyle that's just really funky. Especially if you guys this season have been playing Heartseeker. Which is arguably the best rogue build. However, I am thinking that Andy's post-midseason -pa post patch is probably going to be better. But we'll see because it's getting such a huge buff. I'm just happy the devs did not nerf Heartseeker. It's going to be really great to enjoy that build for the season. So next season when it does get um, nerfed, then we will have the Andes build, which will be great. Oh my god, what, what a good suppression right there. 
But yeah, you can play this at mid-range with all the extra chances on this build for the increased cold imbuement. You can see that once I cast it, I got eight charges, which is just great. And by the time we use all of them, uh, we end up getting it back. See, I got two casts of it left. And then, boom, now we're back up, which is great. You can use this at mid-range. And then bosses or large mobs, you get really close and just deal a bunch of damage. I'm not even going to grab the uh, the uh, shrine there. We probably don't need it. But the build plays really, really... It's really good after I got used to the play style and actually how to use this build correctly. Um, sometimes I think it's still a little clunky at times because you really need to rack up the three combo points. Otherwise, the build struggles just a little bit. But you guys can see that it does a lot of damage. You can see our crit numbers are pretty good across the board. We freeze everything, which is super fun. We have Caltrops for even more scalable damage and just to kind of add some more CC, which is great. Oh, I can't do it through a wall. And then once we get to the boss, we kind of just are just really up on him. Um, I've been... Like after today, we've been really enjoying the build. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. But this isn't no heart seeker. I'm gonna tell you that this ain't no heart seeker. Get knocked down. It's just such a different play style, and because we don't have the additional attack speed like Andy's has got, it's just so different. And now we're gonna backtrack. Shout out to the devs again. Love this. Let's go up this way, though. You know what I mean? Let's go up this way. Get rid of this defense guy. Get rid of you. You guys ain't nothing without damage reduction. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> I've been saying this all night. It feels so weird to see, like, overpower crits on this build. It's so funny. So we've, we almost finished this. But you can see we're almost at four minutes on an 80 with just a little bit of uh, level eight gear and the rest is level four. So the build is is still very, very strong. I don't think it's going to do anything outside of like maybe 100. It may just top off at 105s, I think. But once we CC, man. You can see the damage is just it's just there. We CC the boss. Ooh, triple GA gloves. Let's check those out for the video. They're going to be insane. I just know it. Let's take a look. Uh, Not bad, I guess. But yeah, guys, here is Barrage. The build is super fun. Uh, the play style is a little bit clunky to get used to, but once you get used to it, man, you guys can see you can kind of fly. Um, so again, I think this is going to be able to speed farm in the 90s, low 90s maybe, uh, maybe top off at 105 so at the most but yeah this build is really really fun guys we're gonna move on to rapid fire but make sure to like the build let's get this over 100 likes guys for those who want to play barrage hopefully this gets turned into multi-shot with a legendary or a skill change or a skill rework which would be sweet and comment down below let me know what you guys think of the build before the patch notes go live on monday and don't forget to subscribe guys at all as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace